I don't talk much about Tesla on this channel. There are a couple of reasons for that, and I'll come back to those later. But a viewer recently suggested I needed a better car to help the channel grow. Get a Tesla, they said. So I did. It's a bit funny looking though. I wonder if it might have been in an accident, because I was fairly sure that Teslas had much rounder edges than this. Stay tuned and find out why I wanted a Tesla, but don't have one. As I so often find to be the case, a viewer made a very valid comment on a video a couple of weeks ago. It was honest, truthful, helpful and completely accurate, although there was an accidental slight in there as it happens. On my 12 volt battery health video, Arbre38 said, get a Tesla, your subs and views will go through the roof. You're really good at this, so get a good car. And as I said, that's entirely correct, isn't it? Tesla really seemed to have captured the zeitgeist. The commenter is entirely correct. For better or for worse, putting the word Tesla in the title of a YouTube video is going to get it a lot more views. And sometimes it is for worse. Sometimes seeing Tesla in the title of a video is a red flag. It can be an indicator of a video made solely for clicks. It might be clickbaity nonsense. And that's one of the reasons I don't talk about Tesla on my channel. I have been accused of clickbaiting recently, sadly, but that's not my intention. What I am trying to do with my videos is investigate the assumptions and questions that people have, taking a topic and considering it in some depth. And so a lot of my titles are questions, not statements. There are rarely exclamation marks here, except maybe for this one. Instead, I mostly use question marks to try to convey that people will get a question and some answers instead of just clickbait nonsense, which personally I find offensive as a viewer of YouTube, and that's why I try to avoid it as a creator. The problem is that clickbait titles work. They get more eyes on the videos, and for a lot of people that means more income. And that's why it abounds. My motivation isn't money, as it happens. I don't earn anything from making these videos, and I don't intend to. That's not what encourages me to create and upload them. Indeed, were I to get enough subscribers to do so, I would turn down the adverts to minimise them, if not turn them off completely, rather than to profit from them. I'm effectively an accidental YouTuber, and very much a hobbyist. I started because I wanted to get better information to friends and family to fight some of the misinformation we see in the mainstream, the traditional media. I think the clean energy revolution is going to be really great. I love my EV and I think most people will like them if they give them a chance. Meanwhile, we see a lot of negativity on these subjects at the moment, lots of misinformation. Sometimes it's because of ignorance, but a lot of it is done in the name of profit, gaming you and I to get more clicks, more views, more comments, more ad revenue. I felt I'd gained some knowledge and experience that could be valuable to people as a result of taking the plunge with an EV myself. And because at heart, I'm an engineer and interested in how things work. That left me two options. The first was to have a conversation with a friend or family member about a subject, one-on-one, -on -one, one at a time but the other was to create videos and upload them here. The benefits of the latter are that I get time to prepare to say what I really mean in a considered and structured way, but also they might be of help to a few more people by doing them here. So here we are, and today's video represents a milestone. This, you see, is video number 52. I've managed to upload a video per week, every week, for a whole year. Come rain, shine or technical difficulty, I've managed to make and upload a new video every week without fail. To be fair, a couple were released on a Sunday when that week proved more difficult, but I've always managed to make it. That seems so like something to be celebrated, something I wanted to enjoy and to share with you, those who make the time to watch and to interact. And of course, it fitted with that comment. The timing was sublime. It was a good idea, 
and so I hatched a plan to get myself the Tesla that my viewer had suggested. What better way to celebrate than to hire myself a Tesla for the weekend? To drive something I hadn't driven, get to learn from it and experience it, a special treat as a pat on the back. One of the videos I did a while back recommended a few ways you might try an EV, because there's nothing better than trying something for yourself when it comes to learning if your opinions are valid. It's a way to question your own assumptions, to find out what was right about your initial instincts without having tried it in real life beforehand. But more importantly, to find out what you got wrong and learn from the process of doing so. I'll link to that earlier video from the end screen of this one in case you're interested in that. However, one of the things I said at the time was that getting what you wanted out of a hire company might be hard. And so you find me standing next to a Polestar 2, because I didn't manage to get what I wanted. And so let this be a cautionary tale for you if you take that route. Tesla have caught people's attention. They were very expensive in the early days. But actually Tesla have managed to bring their prices down quite a lot in the last year or so, bringing them within reach of more people. Even so, they are considered luxury cars and desirable, and so they are not the fare of most hire companies. My initial attempts to get one for the weekend, therefore, was to use Turo. That was looking good until my payment was declined by the credit card company right at the end of the process. For some reason, Turo gets flagged as potentially fraudulent. I got in touch with the card company and they were in the midst of sorting the problem out when for a completely different, unrelated reason, I had to cancel my card after spotting what appeared to be suspicious activity from a few days before. Whilst I've since worked out what that activity was and know I need not be worried, my old card has been cancelled and the new one won't arrive for a few days. I went back to Toro with a debit card, but that was also unsuccessful, so I decided I would have to try to hire from a regular hire company instead. The problem with regular hire companies is they don't really support you choosing a car. Instead, they want you to have something within a category, as that's easier in terms of stock management for them. So it was going to take some patience to find what I wanted that way. One way to overcome that is to use a local, perhaps smaller company. At those sorts of places you can speak to someone and they might be able to fit you to a particular car. We have one such company locally, but sadly they don't have Teslas. No, it was going to have to be one of the bigger companies. Hertz sprang to mind as they announced a few years ago that they were getting into EVs, including Teslas. Indeed, they had said they were going to buy a lot of Teslas they were getting heavily into them, as a way to relaunch themselves after some financial difficulties a few years ago. It was a way to give them a new selling point. Sadly, they appear to have found it a scarier business than they expected. They seem to have found the cost of repairs to be a lot higher than they had estimated originally. I don't think that will be because of breakdowns or failures, but instead because people might have got themselves into trouble with such a fast and powerful car. And if you've watched the Wham Bam Tesla Cam channel, then you too might think that the repair costs of Teslas are much higher than you might initially expect in the event that they are involved in an accident. So I think that problem put them off. I looked at a bunch of websites, but so often I would start off thinking they would do a Tesla, only to get fed into the same old funnel of all the ICE cars. They just wanted to get me into any old thing and that wasn't what I was after. I tried making a few phone calls, but they don't want you to speak to people, as people cost too much money. So I was largely stonewalled. I decided the best approach was to go somewhere. Somewhere big, with lots of rental companies I could try to speak to. So I headed for Heathrow Airport, keen to walk up to the rental desks and ask them what I could get. Sixth, have a manned booth at Heathrow, they could do me a car, but it was going to be about £100 more than the online quotes I'd seen. Sadly, nobody else mans their desk at the airport, at least not at the weekend, so I had to fall back to websites. Europe Car seemed to offer that they might be able to do a Tesla, although they don't hold a lot of stock, and so they have to confirm after you book. 
I tried to take that approach, but sadly my card also wouldn't work with their website. So it seems it's a problem with online payments using that card and not the websites themselves. I went back to Heathrow this morning to try to get it done in person, heading for Europe Cars pickup area as my first port of call. But out of nowhere, they said they could only do something for a minimum of seven days, so that was no good at all. While I was there though, I noticed Hertz were next door and they had a plethora of Tesla Model 3, all just begging to be hired it seemed, so I wandered over there. I took a ticket and waited to be served, but in the end it was to no avail. While they have loads on site, you can't rent them anymore. As each comes back in off hire, they get parked in a corner, ready to be shipped out and got rid of. By this point, I've been trying for many hours over three separate days, and I felt that probably something was better than nothing, so I asked what else they had. And that's how I ended up with the Polestar. Hertz still have those and seem happy to rent them out. It was really that or go home empty handed. I don't think Hertz have given up on EVs completely, as some of the detractors would have us think, but they've been stung by Teslas and are not renting those anymore. So I've had the whole star to enjoy for the day, although after all of the trouble I don't have it for all that long. As a result I'm going to talk about that separately, possibly even after it's gone back. Instead I want to talk a bit about Tesla. Whilst I didn't get hands-on experience of one today, that doesn't mean I have no experience as I drove a Model S for the weekend a few years ago. But before I talk Tesla, I need to make a quick disclaimer. The main reason I don't talk about Tesla very much is that I'm a Tesla shareholder. I hold a few Tesla shares. So take what I say on Tesla with that in mind. I don't rave about Tesla on the channel, partially because they're not for everyone. Partially because I know that Elon is a very divisive character, even though he has achieved so much but mainly because I want to remain as impartial and unbiased as I can. I value my integrity, it's an important part of my personality, so I don't want anyone to think that I might be pumping the stock or talking Tesla up unduly. But here's the thing, if you do need to do long distance trips on a regular basis, then you should really consider a Tesla as an option. Their cars currently offer the best user experience, their software is some of the best in the industry. They do a lot of things very well, but probably the most important is the route planning. Their system can route you to your destination wherever it is, however far away it is. It automatically calculates all of the charging stops you need, so that you don't need to think or plan at all. The car does it all for you. It will often route you via a Tesla supercharger if it can, which is a good thing because that's also still the best charging network by some margin. Superchargers are very fast, they have been very reliable, and they are also a lot cheaper than the other rapid charging networks. They tend to be about half the price of the others for Tesla owners, sometimes less, although it varies a bit by time of day. What's more, you don't need to faff with payment methods. The supercharger recognises the car, and automatically bills the owner's account based upon their stored information. Just plug in and go. There's a lot to be said for the Tesla experience. It's got to be one of the best there is in my opinion, so you should probably consider it. If you need the ability to do long distance road trips, then you should add Tesla to the shortlist and see if anything rules it out rather than the other way around. It is what every other manufacturer should strive for. Both as a techie and as a user of an electric car, it seems obvious to me that what Tesla offers is what everyone should do, and yet they still don't. That's very odd. But if I say such good things about Tesla, and I'm prepared to put my money into shares, then why don't I have one? Well, there are a couple of reasons. Firstly, they are all a bit large for me. As a lover of the smart car, I'm used to small cars, very small cars, and Teslas are all a bit too big for my liking. The Model 3 is the smallest, and that would be okay at a push, but it's a saloon with a limited boot opening, 
and I would really want a hatchback. As part of hobbies, I transport stuff that would be much easier to move with a hatchback, and it can help with day-to-day -day activities too, of course. So the Model 3 isn't really for me. The Model Y would be better from the point of view of practicality, but that's even bigger. It certainly looks bigger on the road anyway. Furthermore, they haven't been around as long, so they are still very expensive. And that's a factor too, of course. At the time I was looking for a car, the Teslas were all out of reach from the point of view of cost. They have come down in price a lot since then, but even now they are a lot more expensive than something like a Zoe of a similar age. Sadly, the Teslas were never really in budget. But actually, there's probably another reason, a more fundamental one than even cost. I mentioned earlier that I've driven a Tesla. I drove a Model S that my brother hired me for a weekend as a special treat a few years ago. That was an amazing experience, but I didn't really get comfortable in the driving position. It got better as I adjusted it through the weekend, but it was never actually comfortable. And I think that will probably be a problem in the Model 3 and the Model Y as well. Unfortunately, I have a back problem that makes driving uncomfortable, and in most cars, I end up in a lot of pain quite quickly. It would have been interesting to try a 3 or a Y today to be able to get more information about that. After all, the seats are not quite the same as the seats in the Model S, despite looking very similar. But my guess is that a 3 wouldn't work because it's got a very low seating position that I think would exacerbate the problem. And my guess is that the Y probably wouldn't work either, but it would certainly be interesting to try. So it's still on the bucket list. Once my card problems are behind me, I might be back looking on Turo again. Watch this space. In summary, the reason why I drive the Zoe is because it's the first car in a long time since a Smart that I've been able to get comfortable in. It has quite basic seats with few adjustments, but they just seem to work for me in a way that most car seats really don't. The fact that it was also affordable brought it within reach in a way that the more expensive cars weren't. EVs are expensive, but the Zoe is at the more affordable end so it's a possibility for more people. It would be great to have a Tesla, and my viewer is absolutely right, it would do wonders for the viewing figures, and get me to the point where I have enough subscribers to turn down the adverts. But the Zoe was a more practical option when I was buying, and it works very well for me. I really like it, and I don't have plans to replace it for the moment. Thanks very much for joining me. Your questions and comments on this subject are most welcome. Have you tried a Tesla? If you've liked the video, then it's a help to me if you click the thumbs up button. And it would also help me achieve my stretch goal for the channel if you would subscribe as well. Thanks.